Good day and welcome to another exciting delivery of our custom chart series on Tableau. Today we will be looking at unit charts. This is what the unit chart looks like. As you can see, um, it gives us a nice graphical way of um, looking at data. Um, in this case, this example at least, we have the annual births for a specific area or so forth, um, where we've got little individual um, units indicating either one or a collection of a number of um, observations. These work very well um, if you want to show your data in a infographic manner. Uh, we'll see with the example that we do as well that it's quite, stra quite straightforward to use the exact same uh, waffle chart method in, in getting these created. Let us look at the data set we'll be using for today. So we, today we are focusing on Europe. And as you can see, the data set contains the country, uh, the number of votes it's got in the council, and the European Parliament seats it has, as well as the GDP in euros, well, euro millions as such, and then also the population. Let's create our Tableau model and import the data. All right, so straightforward import. We will be using a text file as the data was supplied um, in a CSV format. Selecting the states.csv file and import. All right. Um, you'll see the data looks exactly the same as in the file. The first step as we had with the waffle chart is to build our skeleton, but we need to know what our skeleton looks like. So we will be looking at the population firstly. So let's look at what the actual populations within each of these countries. Now we might already have some suspicions of which ones are the bigger ones in this list, but let's see them down and sort it from largest to smallest. Okay, so 81 million in Germany down to Malta with less, even less than 500,000. Now, in order to depict our data onto a um, unit chart, we will be using stick main figures, uh, but we need to decide what one would represent. Obviously, we cannot draw 81 million of those onto a graph. It would not make any sense. So what we could have a look at is to reduce this to a better number. And I'm thinking 500,000, that every 500,000 in the population equals to one one um, unit. All right, so let's just add a calculated field over here and see what happens if we do that. Let's call this population 500,000, so just put a K 4,000, and as straightforward as taking the population as we had divided by 500,000. Let's pop that onto our visualization or our graph. And you can see now it makes a bit more sense that we have a, a way more reduced number of observations we have to draw onto our visualization. However, um, this doesn't make sense that we have 400,000 equaling one unit of this population. So what we'll do is we'll just change our calculated field and we will just call this raw floor, which um, that function would give us obviously the lowest integer, full integer that it's got um, from the calculation. So, which would be right. So for Malta, we would have no um, units, which obviously it's because it's less than 400,000, but as soon as it goes above 500,000 or over a million, it would start accumulating these. Now we also have a better sense of what our uh, unit chart template needs to look like. So as you can see, we need to cater for at least 162 of these units. And the easiest way to do that is just to take that and put it onto six different rows. Okay, if we use the calculator, let's just quickly see over here. If we've got 162 and we use six different columns, we would end up with 27 rows, which isn't too bad. And that would fit into our visualization. We might just up that to 29 to leave a little bit of space at the top if our model changes with new data uh, or so forth. So um, let's go and create our model on our unit chart on Excel. In the interest of time, I've already created a template for our graph. So let's just have a quick look. Um, as mentioned, we're going to use, be using six columns and we will be using 20, uh, what was it, 27 rows. We'll just make some extra space as I've indicated to make sure that we cater for the 162 units from our data, the population data. Let's import this unit chart template um, into Tableau as well. We've got our data there. Maybe let's just rename our sheet first to population. So we do not get confused once we have more of these open. 
So in our data source, we will just go and connect to Excel, which is this unit chart example. Oh, by the way, I neglected to mention all of this data, um, the European Union, or should I rather say the EU member states data, as well as this chart is available on superdatascience.com. So please go and pick it up from there. All right. So if we choose the population chart as we uh, the population template, as I mentioned, you'll see it pulls in quite nicely. Yep. And then we can go into a new sheet. Firstly, we'll drag column to column and we'll drag row to rows. We will not aggregate our measures and we will put our value into the detail. We then need to create a calculated field that we will use to color up our actual unit. And we will call this population uh, color, just to distinguish when we do multiple charts later on. And you might remember, we, yeah, we also just say the sum of our population, the 500,000, because we want to work with those specific units. Oh, it's already put it there, there we go. Um, if that's greater or equal to the actual value, the sum of the value, then we need to color our boxes. Oh, let's just see. Okay, yeah, my bad. I, the value over there, there we go. All right, now you'll see if we drag this onto color, nothing changes, it just has a bunch of trues. And the reason for that is all of our countries is, are actually included into this data over here. So we need to, in, in order to see our data properly, we need to put country into our filters and just select one country at random and let's work with Denmark. All right, see and there the colors update. The reason being all of the countries together um, combined goes higher than our limit we've set over there. Uh, that would be it. We can now change our colors. So straightforward once again, true is blue and false is a light gray. There we go. And let's also, because we're working with population, Let's change our name quickly. Population unit chart. Oh, let's just call it population unit. All right. Because we're using you're working with population, it would be nice to change our shape and put, for instance, yeah, well, obviously select more shapes. We don't want one of those. And go down to gender, for instance. And we can actually just use one of these that would work quite well as our um, units. That works pretty cool. Let's cre increase the size a little bit. And let's also just hide these once again. Uh, there we go. And grid lines, don't forget that. So format our grid lines, gone. And there we go. That's our unit chart. And now you can see if we go and change our, oops, let's just show the, show the filter. If we do go and change our country, and again, we want to use only the unique ones. There we go. So if we want to choose Cyprus, it would decrease quite a bit. If we use Latvia, it would increase. Let's take something much bigger. Germany would obviously almost fill up the whole block. That, so this now gives us a good indication of how big each of these countries are um, in comparison to each other. And once we put it with more metrics, then we would even get a better picture. You can now also continue and create the rest of these measures into graphs. So for instance, um, we've spoken of a population. We can do the same for GDP. Um, the same for the actual seat numbers as well as the council votes. Um, what I just want to show you briefly as well uh, is that for, let's say for instance when we work with GDP, it might make sense to use a different um, shape than our normal boring circles or whatever is available under the additional uh, ones over here. Let's say for instance we want to use an actual euro sign as our current euro currency sign as our um, unit and these are obviously not in here now a, a neat trick would be um, straightforward just jump into google and search for instance for euro icon and call it the png png is the file type and then you know you would get multiples just clicking on the first one you get it displayed properly and you can just save it as onto your local machine now that file that you saved you, I've saved mine over there. I'll just make a quick copy of that. Is if you um, go into your documents uh, or wherever you've stored your Tableau repository, it's normally um, directly into your, into your documents, and you go into my, yeah, my Tableau repository, shapes, and you'll see these 
folders over here correspond, let me just jump back, correspond with these names over there. So it's as straightforward, let's jump back into the finder, there we go. This is straightforward as creating a new folder and calling this custom icons and pasting it in there. There we go. And our hero symbol is in there. Now, if we go back to Tableau, you see it hasn't refreshed yet. You can just click on reload, sh reload shapes and still not, all right, that might happen. <laughs> you can close it down and just go back in for it to refresh um, and just click reload shapes and custom icons there we go so if you click on that and you just select your custom icon you might have to redo it once or twice just for it to refresh um and not weather my bad custom icons and clicking on our euro sign there you see there we go it has updated that nicely to the euro sign we can just play around with the size obviously and there you go so obviously this doesn't work for population as well but if you have any icons or any shapes that you can't find under your standard ones you can easily create your custom icons let me just change this back as i would like to have that on mine there we go so please continue and build the others um, for the other metrics because you will note that it would oh there's a spelling mistake i only saw that no. <laughs> so if you saw this earlier, thanks um, for noticing. Uh, let me just fix that up. There we go. Population. Before we either um, pause the video or step out and um, create our own for the rest of the measures, let's quickly create a nice map that can go with this and it will be fitting nice together later on. So let's just create a new sheet and add in the country dimension over there. Let's change the chart type to a full chart. And you'll see obviously the the countries we are dealing with and what i would like to do what i would like to do is just go into the map layers and tick off all of the different oh, i don't show that again and tick off all of the different layers as the one that i would like to create that goes into our dashboard needs to be plain and simple like that just showing the states the member states the eu member states what we could do next is to add yellow stars in each of these countries. As you would know, the European Union flag is um, a blue background and with yellow stars on there. So let's make it look similar like that. Now, you can do that by just taking the um, latitude within rows, holding down your control button and dragging it next to itself. That would duplicate your chart. Um, and you will notice also that we've now got three charts, well, two chart um, options here and three in total where the top one is for all of the charts and we can change the options. However, we'll just change the bottom one. We're happy with the top one and we can make this um, shapes, change our shape to a star and change our star color to a yellow. All right. And then obviously to overlay them, you just have to right, sorry, click over there and say dual axis. There we go. Now we've got our yellow stars on each of these countries and we can just increase the sli size slightly if we want, just to highlight actually where our countries are. I will rename this to map. I will now leave you to make your own unit charts as we have done for the population. I'll do mine as well. And I'll pick up again the video um, when I have created all of mine. And then we can build the dashboard. All right, welcome back. And now that we've done all the hard work, we can put it nicely into a dashboard and have some fun. Um, just to show you what I've done. So there's my votes, my seat, and my GDP chart. All right, so let's start with the dashboard. So I will just do a custom size for this one specifically. And I think we'll do 1,200 in width and we'll make the height 600. I'm um, seeing as the, we want to lay it out with the map on the left hand side and then the unit charts on the right to get that infographic feel. We'll start off by putting the map in, uh, then dropping our population chart, as well as the GDP chart, then the seats, and then the votes. Just have them all there at one go. We'll just remove our legend. This is not needed in here. Um, as well as let's resize a couple of things. We'll do a lot of resizing, but later perhaps the next thing we can do is just to make our chart a bit more interactive and have all of the unit charts relate to each other as well. Is we're going to create a dimension to use as a filter. 
So we can just go to any chart and we can just add a parameter. I mean, sorry, not to create a dimension, but to create a parameter. We'll create the parameter um, by calling this country parameter. And we will make this a string. We will also make it choose from a list and we will use the country as the list because we don't need to retype everything. It's, it's already inside a field and we can say, okay. Now the parameter by itself is not going to do anything. So we need to go into the chart and set the filter or edit the filter and say, well, first of all, we want to include all of the countries, but we want to add a condition. And in that condition, we'll use a formula and we'll say where our country is equal to the country parameter. So whenever we change our country for our country parameter, it would update the country in our filter. We can briefly test that by just putting this quickly onto the um, chart and you can see it works perfectly as it has done for our filter. All right, I'll briefly do the others in fast forward motion um, and then I'll see you in a sec. And we're set. Let's go and add the parameter to our the dashboard by just saying um, on the validation chart, we'll say parameter and having it brought across. Just put it at the bottom over here and you'll see if I change this to a different country, all of the unit charts will update with that related information in there. There we go. All right, so um, let's tidy up this dashboard briefly. Um, firstly, what we'll need to do as well um, is I will just hide all of the titles. I think we'll add our own titles at the end. Uh, do the map as well. And then what we want to do as well is make these green um, unused units disappear. So that's a bit straightforward as well. By going to the chart, into the color, and you'll notice there is no white. You can run through all of these. But a quick hack is to just double click on the color um, and just play around with the different options over there. I just go to the gray slider and select white. And if you click OK, you'll see they disappear magically. And then in your dashboard, you only have the related ones. So again, changing this would make it look excellent. So I'll briefly do the others as well. There we go, that, that looks great. Let's do a final resize on all of our charts. And I will just zoom into the map to make it a bit um, better. Being able to view it a little bit better. There we go. And then let's resize each of our charts. Now, what you want to look for doing here is to create the same kind of spacing between the columns and the rows for each of the charts. So as you can see, we can compress the population a bit more. And it might make sense to just choose a country with more um, units so we can see what's going on. Uh, let's just move this in a little bit. It's a bit cramped at the end over there. You can even move it a bit more. There we go. This is a bit of trial and error every time, right? So um, we have to see what works for you. So we can just move that in. And there we are. And we might just move a little bit more. Cool. As you can see also now that fixes the columns, but not necessarily the, the number of the line spacing. These are much closer to these and so forth. And you can literally just use a blank spacer in there, which you can adjust and um, manipulate it slightly. Because obviously both would be different or the size that is used, needed for it. So, And because you can see this one even, we can drop it down more. Uh, there we go. That looks perfect. So what's missing lastly is um, as the actual descriptions of each of these charts um, and just let's put a little spacer in here as well just to make it a bit nicer looking that our parameter is over there and we can just rename our parameter obviously just a country or at least the title of that um, do some final touches and then just some text over there so here we'll just call population and this is per 500,000 So that would give us an indication of what the population is. So we can just change the size over here. Let's use a 14 and let's just make it bold. Apologies, make it bold 14. And we can just obviously squash this down again. I'll quickly do the rest for the other charts as well. And there we go, that is our visualization, our final unit chart. And you can see it looks great. You can do some proper comparisons. Uh, by changing the different countries to get a better idea of how each country is make, made up and how the European Union is made up. Once again, thank you for joining us on this video and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel 
and for more exciting stuff. All right, until next time.